this is what our objective is. So this is how we interact with people. In our interactions, we keep these things in mind. You know, that person may not be thinking or seeing things at my level. It's okay. And let me do what will edify that person. The word literally means like an architect in, our, in construction and building a building. So let me do things that will build that person up. And let me do things that will please that person. Let me bless that person's life. And he says, even Christ did not please himself. So look at the Christ, look at Jesus' example. He didn't do it because I feel good. No. He did what, he took the reproaches that came against him so that he could be a blessing to others. And what Paul is saying here is, after he mentions Christ, and he's quoting from Psalm 69 verse 9, he says, look, even Jesus did what the Old Testament scripture is saying, and now he tells us, see, these things were written, meaning the Old Testament scriptures, were written for our ex as examples to us, so that we, through the comfort and patience of the scriptures, we could be built up. Those things. So whatever is written in the Old Testament is not for us to be ignored. It's for us to draw strength, uh, lessons from, just like Jesus did. So that we may all be like-minded. That we may all with one mind and one mouth glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. So what's he getting at? He's getting at us being a community of believers who are like-minded, one mind, one mouth. Meaning a community where we are all flowing together. We may have difference in preferences. We may have difference in, 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 in how we look at things, perspectives, but that does not separate us. We are still able to walk together in one mind, like-minded, and with one mouth glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Lord him, all you peoples. Verse 12. Again, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So now Paul is saying, you know, Jesus came as a servant, as a minister to the circumcision, meaning to the Jewish people. It happened through believing. You and I believe. We believe the word. We believe who Christ is. We believe his promises. Through believing, the Holy Spirit has come to empower you and me so that you and I could be full of joy, peace, and each one of us has been given grace. There is grace on your life given to you by God to be someone and to do something. Paul was called to be an apostle and he went out to uh, bearing the gospel to the Gentile world. God's grace is on your life to be somebody and to do something for his kingdom. Don't let that grace be wasted. Strive with me. You partner with me in this conflict. You partner with me in this fight that I'm fighting. How? By praying for me. You see, this is what we do when we pray for each other. You, you know a brother or a sister, somebody who's going through something in life. There's a conflict going on. When you pray for them, what are you doing? You're striving together with them. In their battle, you've stepped into their fight and you're in the conflict with them. Their strength has been reinforced because you are praying for them. I want you to avoid people who are causing divisions and offenses. Avoid that. That means, how do they do it? Next verse. He says, you know, they are people who are really not serving Jesus, but they're actually serving their own selfish interests. When he says serving their own belly, don't just think about eating food. <laughs> the point that that figure of speech is they are serving their own selfish interests, their own desires. And how do they do it? By flattering words and smooth words. So they talk very nicely. 
but they can deceive those who are very simple. That means people who are not discerning.